Lockheed Martin has officially completed production on the 1000th F-35, making it hands down the most successful stealth aircraft production run in history. In fact, there are more F-35s in the world today than there are all other stealth aircraft ever built by all nations combined. Heck, there are more F-35s on the deck of the USS Tripoli in this single picture than there are stealth fighters in all of Russia. But the F-35 isn't only successful as compared to fifth-generation fighters, it's an immense success as compared to older fourth-generation fighters as well. In fact, today, the F-35 Lightning II is the seventh most widely operated fighter on the planet. This program began with nine nations involved in its development, but today, its list of buyers has stretched all the way to 17. And in the past few years, F-35s have accumulated some 773,000 hours in the sky, spread out across 469,000 sorties, or individual flights. Now, the F-35 has gotten a bad rap, in large part because of a very troubled acquisition cycle that I'm on record is calling a downright boondoggle. But despite the production delays and cost overruns, the fighter that emerged from that boondoggle is widely considered to be the most technologically advanced tactical aircraft ever to see service. And I have yet to meet a pilot who's flown in or near an F-35 who's had anything bad to say about these aircraft. In fact, they're generally understood to make older fourth generation fighters significantly more capable just by flying nearby, thanks to their incredible degree of sensor fusion and the data they can securely transmit to other aircraft flying in the vicinity. In other words, the F-35 isn't just a very capable fighter, it's also a force multiplier. But this isn't my first day on the internet, so let's take a minute to respond to the comments that I know a whole bunch of you are already typing under this video, starting with the Russian fanboys who will tell you that all the F-35 does is crash. Now this is an excellent example of a combination of recency and availability biases. You see, F-35s seem as though they crash often because there are so many of them in the sky on any given day. And the truth is, the F-35 is actually the safest modern fighter ever developed. In fact, if you go back and look at the crash data of the F-35 during its first 12 years of service as compared to the A-10, F-15, F-16, or F-22, you'll find that the F-35 has a significantly better track record. By this point in the A-10 service life, 9% of its airframes had already been lost in accidents. By this point in the F-16s, that number was 13%. But today, the F-35's loss rate is about 1%. The simple truth is, with more than 800 F-35s flying around out there for 14 different nations, there are just a lot more opportunities for one to crash than the eight or so Su-57s Russia's got in service. All right, how about the folks saying the F-35 is just too expensive to operate? The truth is, there really used to be something to this. As recently as 2016, it was reported that F-35s cost an average of about $67,000 per hour to operate. But Lockheed Martin and the U.S. Air Force have really been trying to drive this figure down in order to be able to afford to operate as many F-35s as the Air Force intends to purchase. And as recently as 2023, that operating cost had been reduced by more than 80% down to right around $28,000 per hour. Now that's only a little bit more than an F-15. All right, what about those who claim the F-35 can't dogfight? Well, first of all, it probably shouldn't. It was designed to operate like a sniper, but nonetheless, it definitely can. Most of the claims that say it can't dogfight stem from a 2015 report published by War is Boring about an F-35A squaring off in a duel against a Block 40 F-16D. And in that fight, the F-16 definitely came out on top, and the world's media ate that up. But it wasn't until weeks later that the Air Force finally revealed that the F-35 used in that exercise was an airframe known as AF-2. In other words, it was the second F-35 ever built, and it didn't have the vast majority of combat systems 
F-35s fly with today, including the helmet and electro-optical targeting system that allows F-35 pilots to target enemy aircraft without having to point the nose of the jet directly at them, as well as the F-35's radar-absorbent skin that would limit the F-16's ability to get a radar lock on its opponent. And to make matters even worse, that particular F-35 was flying with software restrictions on board that prevented the pilot from pushing the airframe too hard, limiting it to under 7G maneuvers, a restriction the F-16 obviously didn't have. In other words, this test article F-35 was forced to fly with both wings tied behind its back and it ended up losing against one of the most prolific dogfighters in history. That's not really a story. Today's F-35s, on the other hand, have no such limitations and as such are far more capable in a close quarter scrap. But if you ask most pilots, they'd still rather avoid that by taking out the enemy before they ever even know it's there. What about the people who say the U.S. spent $1.7 trillion on the F-35 and they're still trying to work out problems? Well, the U.S hasn't spent $1.7 trillion on the F-35. In fact, nobody has. $1.7 trillion is the estimated total program cost that includes research, development, acquisition, and sustainment and maintenance for the next 50 years to come. $1.7 trillion is the estimated cost for the entire lifetime of the F-35 program, which includes the Air Force alone operating more than 2,000 of these fighters. In other words, saying the F-35 cost $1.7 trillion is a lot like saying a Ford Mustang costs the sticker price plus the cost of all the fuel you'll ever put in it, every oil change it'll ever get, every brake pad ever installed, and any other repairs that might happen down the road. Technically speaking, that is the overall cost, but to pretend that's the sticker price is downright dishonest. All right, what about the people who say the F-35 has an abysmal readiness rate and there are so many parts backlogged waiting for repair that the U.S. has been forced to turn to contractors rather than doing those repairs in-house? There is, again, some truth to this, but also some very important context. Now, these claims stem from a Government Accountability Office report published in September of last year that shows how F-35 readiness rates across the DoD sit at around 55%, which definitely isn't great. But most people read the headlines and not the report. The report shows very clearly that one of the biggest reasons why F-35 readiness rates are low is because the F-35 repair depot infrastructure is still under construction and it's expected to be completed in 2027, at which point the F-35's readiness rates are expected to jump across the force to just about comparable with the F-15 and F-16. But I want to be clear that it isn't all good news for the F-35 despite this 1,000th fighter milestone. In fact, Today, the F-35 program is facing an entirely new batch of technical setbacks and cost overruns, all associated with what's known as Tech Refresh 3. Now, Tech Refresh 3 is effectively a hardware and software upgrade for the aircraft that will provide a 37-fold increase in onboard computing power, 20 times the onboard data storage, and new double-redundant display processors with five times the power to give the pilots far more situational awareness than ever before. And Tech Refresh 3 is really just an appetizer that will lead to the Block 4 upgrade, which will be such a massive increase in capability that I have long argued the Block 4 F-35 deserves its own designation. This new version of the F-35 will have a newer, even more advanced onboard radar that's rumored to use gallium nitride transmit and receive modules that will dethrone the F-35's current AN-APG-81 radar as the most advanced and powerful radar ever affixed to a fighter. It's also getting a big upgrade to its infrared distributed aperture system with infrared search and track capability, allowing it to target enemy stealth fighters that don't even show up on radar. It's also getting a massive upgrade to its electronic warfare suite, making it one of the most potent EW platforms on the planet. It's increasing its internal weapon storage from four weapons to six, adding a slew of new weapons, both kinetic and cyber, and a bunch of other upgrades that are still classified today. But before any of that can happen, Lockheed Martin's gotta get Tech Refresh 3 to work. Now, initially, these hardware and software upgrades were supposed to be installed in every new F-35 rolling off the assembly line starting 
last April. But the first F-35 with the Tech Refresh 3 systems on board didn't actually take flight until January 6th of this year, and they're now expecting to finish testing of it by April, which means they're about one year behind. And make no mistake, every day one of these programs is delayed costs money. So to be clear, the F-35 program is not without shortcomings, and the truth is, no fighter program ever has been. But today, the F-35 is, hands down, the most technologically advanced fighter on the planet, and once Block 4 emerges, it will be even more capable. In fact, Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall has already stated plainly that in the future, Block 4 F-35s will be flying with their own AI-enabled drone wingmen, just like the sixth-generation fighters in development today, meaning the F-35 really will be a bridge to the sixth generation of fighters. At the end of the day, the F-35 was built to be the first to do a lot of things no other fighter had ever done before, and now Block 4 aims to do that all over again, and being the first tends to cost a whole bunch of money. But the F-35 is obviously an extremely capable fighter. Otherwise, 17 nations with acquisition officials who can access classified information about its performance that none of us can wouldn't be lining up to buy it. So the next time somebody tells you the F-35 is a failure or a bad fighter, go ahead and send them this video and remind them that there are a thousand of them out there now. So they must be doing something right.